Hi, this is Subhash, Senior Aptitude Faculty from Durga Software. Uh, today we are going to discuss with the topic ratio and proportion. This ratio and proportion is very very important topic. Individually it is not just important, it is supportive topic to the other topics also. See where we use the same concepts in problems on ages and especially to work out questions in data interpretation without having the concepts very strong we cannot work out any question in data interpretation to work out every question in data interpretation 90 percent of the questions are involving the ratio and proportion concepts so we need to learn this thoroughly to work out the questions in particular uh, topic ratio and proportion as well the questions of data interpretation and problems on ages, uh, problems on ages also so let us see what are the concepts of uh, ratio and proportion then we'll come to the real time questions see first we learn the basics of the ratio and proportion let us start with the term with ratio let us start with ratio what is ratio this is very familiar term many times we use even in our daily life also we have some idea what is ratio actually and first what could be the symbol of the ratio two dots the ratio symbol is nothing but two dots ratio denoted by two dots this we call ratio then what does it mean how to express a ratio see we can define the ratio like this if a and B are any two numbers then this we read A is to B if A and B are any two numbers then A is to B is called ratio It is not compulsory every time the ratio may contain only two numbers in the ratio there may be more than two numbers also say for example here the important thing is the ratio may contain more than two numbers also Here, say for example, 2 is to 3, this is 2 numbers ratio. 5 is to 6 is to 7, there are 3 numbers in the ratio. The number of quantities may be any number in a ratio. 7 is to 2 is to 1 is to 5, this all are ratios only. So the ratio, it doesn't mean always there are only 2 numbers. The ratio may contain 2 or more numbers also. Now let us see especially in a is to b what happens then we will go further the different numbers of ratios first we are discussing about a is to b there are so many basic concepts in two numbered ratio when we write like this this is a structure for ratio how to read it can you read this yeah, usually we read it as a is to b a is to B or the same thing we can read as A to B especially in ratio this can be read as A is to B or A to B both are same don't get confused why because in few competitive examinations if it is given in text in words sometimes they may write like this also A is to B or A to B see for example the ages of father and son are in the ratio 7 to 8 we should not think that is 7 to 8 means starting at 7 and ending at 8 that is meaning of 7 is to 8 like that so whenever it is a is to b that can be read as a is to b or a to b both are same we should not have any confusion in if it is in text format in the terms in the english words format now when we write a is to b what a is called what b is called this is very important 
Sometimes they may not give directly the number signed A to B. Sometimes they will be give, it will be given in terms, in English words. So we should know what A is called and what B is called. Yes. Do you know what A is called and what B is called? A is called antecedent. And B? Yeah, it is consequent. A is called antecedent and B is called consequent. And one more important thing is, when we write A is to B, this is nothing but exactly A by B. Every A is to B, we can write as A by B. When we have this type of thing, this structure is called fraction. So every fraction can be expressed as ratio and every ratio can be expressed as fraction. As we know the basic rules of the fraction, any fraction can be simplified if it is possible. See for example, we have a fraction 5 divided by 15. Usually we don't live as it is 5 divided by 15. As we know 5 and 15 are divisible by 5. It can be simplified further. So we simplify this 5 ones are 5, 5 threes are 15 which is exactly equal to 1 by 3. The same thing must be done even in case of ratio also. If instead of 5 by 15 a ratio is given 5 is to 15. Don't live as it is. Simplify it. Why? Because there is a possible there is a possibility to simplify it. Five ones are five, five threes are fifteen, which is equal to one is to three. Then what is the importance of the simplification of a ratio? You simplify or don't simplify in case in a real question you found 5 is to 15. By keeping 5 is to 15 as it is, also you will get the answer. On simplification, whatever you get 1 is to 3, by using 1 is to 3, also you will get the solution. But what is the difference between keeping 5 is to 15 as it is or taking the simplified form 1 is to 3? When you use 5 is to 15, in calculation part, we need more time. It takes longer time. Comparatively, when we take 1 is to 3. 1 and 3 are small numbers, 5 and 15 are big numbers. So, calculations with big numbers always takes longer time. Calculation with small numbers takes less time. That's why this is a uh, process we follow. The simplification, by simplifying the ratio, we can save the time. That is important. So, it is totally our uh, idea to simplify or not. Now, we came to know about the ratio of two numbers. The two numbers ratio expressed as a is to b that we read as a is to b or a to b and the first quantity is called antecedent, the second quantity is consequent. a is to b is exactly a by b. This is very important concept. Many times we need to use a by b instead of a is to b. So we need to remember a is to b is nothing but just it is a by b. But when we write a by b we don't call this is antecedent and this is consequent. We know already this is very simple thing. When we write A by B, A is called numerator and B is called denominator. This is very important. The same thing, A is to B, A is called antecedent, B is called consequent. But when this is expressed as fraction A by B, we don't call this antecedent and we don't call this consequent. This is numerator and this is denominator. Be careful. So when these terms are used, we should be very much careful. What is the first number? What is the second number? Antecedent and consequent. It is about two numbers and this is about the ratio. We we'll take one example. What type of questions and what are the important applications of the ratio we will see. There is a question like this. If a is to b is equal to 2 is to 3 and b is to c is equal to 5 is to 7, then what is a is to b is to c is a question. A is to b is 2 is to 3, b is to c is 5 is to 7. Then the question is what is a is to b is to c? Now your answer is going to be like this. What is given here? A is to b is 2 is to 3 
and b is to c is given 5 is to 7. We need to find a is to b is to c. For that, if you check in these two ratios, here in the a is to b, b's corresponding value is 3, but in b is to c, b's corresponding value is 5. So here while writing a is to b, if we take a value 2 and c value 7, it's okay, but what is to be taken for b? Here b in both cases, it is different. So we cannot take 3, we cannot take 5, then what must be there? To take the value of b in both places, the number should be same, then only we can write a is to b is to c. So to make this b value equal in both cases, account to mathematical idea, already we did in our past education so many times we use this type of things how we did in our past education to make these two numbers equal this number this total ratio multiplied by 5 and this complete ratio multiplied by 3 when this is multiplied by 5 we get 15 and when this multiplied by 3 we get 15 so at both places the b value can be made equal so i am multiplying this by 5 and i am multiplying this by 3 then from this what we get a is to b is going to be 2 fives are 10 is to 3 fives are 15 and b is to c will become 3 fives are 15 and 3 sevens 21 now see here b value is 15 here uh, even here b value is 15 so that we can write that a is to b is to c values from this structure but not from this why because here b value is different here b value we got the same thing therefore a is to b is to c will become a corresponding number is 10 is to b corresponding in both cases is 15 is to c value is 21 so a is to b is to c is 10 is to 15 is to 21 but one thing is very important how long it took this is called mathematical approach what we did here is mathematics this is not advisable in the real time exam it is too long it is not advised in the real time exam we don't approach don't do this why because it is longer time now let us see the same question how can we solve in 3 seconds I am sure you can work out the same question in 3 seconds without this entire process long process so alternative method alternative we can say shortcut what is given here a is to b and b is to c values are given a is to b is given 2 is to 3 and b is to c is given 5 is to 7 now straight away you can write your answer a is to b is to c a is to b is to c is equal to just multiply these two numbers 2 5 are 10 is to and multiply this 5 3 is 15 is to multiply these two numbers 3 7 21 c how much time is required to work out this just 5 seconds less than 5 seconds this is right approach in the real time exam for this you can remember the technique reverse n see how it is the shape is nothing but reverse n the technique for this is you can remember this structure it is the first step second step third step by following this rule the same question we can work out in five seconds this is how in the real time exam the techniques works mathematical approach takes longer time the logical approach takes lesser time so in real time exam always we better to follow the logical approach now 